You know, when you have that feeling of uh, deja vu, you walk into a place and you're like, I've had this conversation before. I, I, I swear I've met this person before. And you walk into a place like, this looks so familiar. Deja vu. Sometimes it's exciting and sometimes it's like, ah, it's very depressing. Police say at least 80 shops have been looted, most of them foreign owned. I think it's safe to say that I'm done with deja vu. Well, we all remember that shameful year, 2008, where we as South Africans learned that horrible word, xenophobia. Lives were ruined, fingers were pointed, international credit ratings dropped, and refugee camps were erected. Now, six years later, it's made a comeback. And you know what the Gauteng MEC for Safety had to say about all this chaos? The attacks are not xenophobic. W wait, what? What? The attacks are not xenophobic. I mean, guys, what are you guys talking about? This is pure criminality on both sides. People who are being targeted or whose shops are being looted, unfortunately, are foreign, foreign nationals. They're not just any foreign national is being attacked in, in, in Soweto. I think we're working from two different dictionaries here. When the only people being looted are foreign nationals, then the action is most definitely xenophobic, which is coincidentally a crime. In my books, these things are a combo. Eh? You can't just buy KFC and not get the four chips. Hmm? A streetwise two without the four chips, it's not a streetwise two. So this thing is a combo. It's the same as saying, no, 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 this isn't a fruit, it's an apple. It's the same thing. Okay, okay, South Africa, in case you didn't hear, the alleged cause of this recent outbreak of madness was when a shop owner shot a young man who was trying to rob his store. Some residents want foreign shop owners removed from their communities, saying the Snake Park shop owner was wrong to take the law into his own hands. So some folks in the community are punishing an entire group of people because one person took the law into their hands. Now, how are they doing this? By taking the law in their hands. It's like they're going, no, this law is ours. This is a country of South Africa. This law belongs to us as the people of the country. So we're taking this law. I mean, it's not like we go to, you know, to, to, to Zimbabwe and take the law of that country in our hands. It's our law. Therefore, we will take it if we want. Hmm? Some, something, something's not right here. Hmm? There must be a voice of reason somewhere in all this chaos. The people we're looting from are the same people that help us. These people communicate with us, but we as black people want to benefit alone and leave other blacks out in the cold. Right now, mob justice is hurting us because right now there's nothing for us to buy. Where will we buy? Treating fellow Africans like second-class citizens is unacceptable. This is Nelson Mandela, South Africa, not some national road in Malawi, man. Plus. Where was all this xenophobia when we needed it in 1652? Hmm? Hmm? Now you want to be a tough guy. No. Chasing shop owners across the border. A border drone in 1909, by the way, doesn't seem like a viable solution to economic hardship. These people, these foreign nationals, don't have it any easier than the people they're selling knickknacks and chicken pieces to. Now, I wonder if any of these uh, uh, looters could trek to Bangladesh, learn a new language, and and then go to the roughest townships in that country and start a spaza shop. I seriously doubt that 80% of the people who are looting can do that. Now, now, we as LNN, we don't like to just throw opinions at you. We like to investigate.